certified solution expert okay microsoft certified solution expert this mcc course microsoft has launched in the year of 2012 guys this mcc course microsoft has launched in the year of 2012 so this course name microsoft has given 2012 server operating system so microsoft in the name of the course is 2012 server operating system. before this mcc this course name is mcit microsoft certified it professional and that time we are using 2008 server operating system. so previously this operating system is for 2008 server OS and the course name is MCIT. Then course is changed to MCS. And this course is designed on 2012 and the name of the OS is what 2012 server OS. But later on, Microsoft has given one more course on this MCSD, one more operating system Microsoft has launched that is 2012. And 2000, next one is 2016 server operating system. Okay. So in this course, MCC course is designed on 2012 and 2016, guys. And in this course, I will teach you 2012 and 2016. And at the same time, I will give you the difference between the age 12 and 16. So in this course, MCC course, we are going to learn 2012 and 2016. So how to deploy our network, how to make our servers by using 2012 server OS, by using 2016 server operating system here, guys. You're going to learn because when you're searching the jobs after completing this course, when going for the interviews, when you're going to searching the jobs, when you're working in the real environment, guys, in the organization. So maybe your servers are running on 2.12, or maybe your servers are running on 2.16. Maybe if your servers are running on 2.12, in future, you're going to migrate your servers to 2.16. So you should be uh, comfortable when you're working on 2.12 environment, 2.16 environment, guys. Okay. So in this course, we are learning this MCSC course. In MCC course, we are learning 2012 and 2016 also, guys. Here, we are going to do the, all the labs, all the practicals. We are going to see the theory, troubleshooting also on 2012 and 2016. So, after completing this course, after completing this MCC course, guys, you can say yourself as a Microsoft Windows. system administrator after completing this course you can see yourself as what microsoft system microsoft windows system administrator okay now guys before going in depth of this course here so i want to know this mcac course microsoft certified solution expert course is a it profession course is a it professional course but in our it professional courses we have two types of courses guys one is a hardware and one is a software. So what you will think, guys? This is a IT professional course. What you will think, guys? This is a software related course or hardware related course, guys? What? So we have one software IT professional course, guys, and one we have a hardware. So what is software guys here software means if you've done example if you've done some languages like if you've done sql programming if you've done oracle if you've done java right or if you've done sap so then you can say you are the software administrator you can say yourself as a software administrator and what is your day-to-day -day job guys for example you have done some sql programming you have done here you are the sql administrator so you are administrator your administrator will in, in one computer will install your software sql software right and they will give you one pc and by using this pc you are the software administrator by using this software sql software you're going to generate some data and this data your employees your users can access right? that is called software it profession course here but this mcsc course is a hardware it profession course guys is the hardware it profession course so in mcsc course guys this MCSC course is a hardware IT professional course. In this course, we are learning how to configure our network lines.
how to configure how to design our new network how to deploy the network in our network guys how to make the servers how to deploy the servers and in servers guys there are so many types of servers are there like domain controller backup server client domain tscp server dns servers uh web servers uh you have uh skills uh, you have a storage server you have hypervisor server guys right there's so many other viewing and we're going to discuss the clients we are going to discuss user management we are going to discuss group policies management right we are going to discuss uh, permissions also how to allow the user to access the data by using permissions how to manage the user performance uh please guys uh after logging to your session class please meet your mic because i am recording this class for you and after the class is completed you will go you will get one copy of the recording in your registry email address you can feel that time when you can feel very comfortable to listen to the class uh mr uh Suresh, can you meet your mic and if you have any doubt any questions anytime guys uh, you can write in the chat box your questions. I will give you the reply. Or if you feel like that you want to talk to me, you can stop me. You can unmute your mic and you can ask the questions. I will help. Okay. Okay. If my writing is not clear, Kaja, I will make sure to write my writing will be clear there. Okay. So guys, you can see here, uh, we are going to work on, right, networks, we are the, after completing this course, we can say uh, we are the IT professional administrator, is MCC course, is a high, uh, is a <coughs> hardware professional course. After completing course, we are the job, our job is what, as administrator, our day-to-day -day job is what, managing our network, servers, clients, users, policies, permissions, profile etc there are so many things are there guys here we're going to learn here okay so after the course is completed we can say ourselves as a it hardware professional administrator and technically we can say ourselves as a what here microsoft windows system administrator okay so guys after completing this course here we can say ourselves as system administrator but when you're searching the jobs in the it organization guys when you're searching the jobs in IT organization, what are the types of jobs are there, guys? You'll see here. In our IT organization, what are the types of jobs? So when you're going for organization to search the uh, IT jobs. So what are the jobs are there, guys? Here? So guys, uh, the first job we have that is called level one job when you're searching the jobs in it companies in it organization we have first job that is called level one now what is level one guys here level one job is called a desktop administrator for what here a desktop administrator so how to become desktop administrator guys uh, if you want to become desktop administrator, you have to do the basic course of IT, guys. What? Hardware and networking course, guys. Hardware and network. If you do the hardware and networking course, so you will become what here? Desktop administrator. Right? You can see yourself as a desktop administrator once you do this course. In hardware and networking, what we are learning, guys? Parts of computers. What is the function of these parts? What is computer? <clears throat> how to install the OS? How to assemble the machine? And how to install the software drivers? How to connect the machine to each other? How to do the sharing? That we are learning. Okay. So, example, I'm working in my organization as a desktop administrator. So, what is my day-to-day -day job, guys? So what is my day-to-day -day job guys my day-to-day -day job is what as a hardware as a desktop administrator 
uh, I have to check all the machines are properly working or not, all the computers. In this machine, OS properly is running or not, right? And if any user needs software like MS Office, Winamp, WinZip, Google Chrome, right? Any software, I'm going to install the software in this PC, in this computers, my user computers. Then I have to check the printer are properly connected or not, user is taking the prints or not. And all the machines are properly connected or not, users are sharing the data or not. So that is a job of a desktop administrator. So in hardware and networking course, what we are learning, guys, we are learning computers, parts of computers, function of the parts, how to install the OS, right? Connecting the machines to each other, printer installation, connectivity installation, we are learning. That is called what here? Hardware and networking course, right? And that after that, your day-to-day -day job is what? As a desktop administrator, you have to check all the machines are properly working or not. If any machine is not working, maybe hardware issue is there or OS not working, you are the administrator, you're going to troubleshoot the problem here and connectivity is there or not. And all the users are sharing the data or not, guys. That is your job, basic job, guys, okay? Managing the machines. That is the job of a desktop administrator. Is clear, Mr. Kaja? Now, come to the next level job, guys, here. We have level two job. Now, what is a level two job, guys? Level two job is called a system administrator, right? Level two job means what here? A system administrator. So how to become system administrator? If you want to become system administrator, you have to learn Microsoft MCSC course. Guys. Once you do this Microsoft MCSC course, you can see yourself as a, a system administrator, right? And what is a job of a system administrator as a system administrator? So I'm going to design my network with server, right? In my network, I have a server like domain controller, uh, additional domain controller, child domain controller, trust between two different forest companies, right? Managing the users, managing the clients, which user should access what data, how much data user should access, whether the user have whether the user have right to access the printer or not, changing the wallpaper or not, managing the web servers, FTP servers, hypervisor servers, right? That is my day-to-day -day job as a Microsoft system administrator. Right? But at the same time, if you learn this course also, guys, right? what course? Linux also. Linux is a non-Windows operating system. Linux also is a server OS, guys, here. So if you do this MCSC course, if you do this Linux course, you can say yourself as a what here? A system admin. If you do the Linux course, you can say yourself as a, a Linux administrator, you can say, right? If you do the MCSC course, you can say you are the Microsoft MCSC system administrator, you can say. But Windows is a graphical OS, guys. Linux is a command-based operating system here. But if you do this course, you can see yourself as a system admin. So it means in your network, you have some machines are running on Windows, some machines are running on Linux. You're going to manage this machine. You're going to manage this server side, okay? Now, on-premises network, like in my network, guys, nice. uh, example, I want to create some servers here, like this. This is my domain controller. This many machines are clients. I'm going to create the users. Right, and these users can log into this client machine. Okay, and we can log in and access the data. So this is a job of a system administrator. Maybe your servers are running on Windows platform or is running on non-Windows platform like Linux operating system, right? Okay. Now come to one more job, guys. But this uh, system admin, I want to tell you one more thing. System admin job is of managing on-premises network. On-premises means within the organization. Right? This network. When I'm designing this network, it's called private network, guys. So what here? Private network. Or you can say yourself as a what here? On-premises network, guys. Here. Okay, so within the organization. I'm designing my network. I'm making servers, clients. This is my job here. Now, guys, one more job is there in our IT profession that is called level three, guys. Now, how to become level three administrator? The level three administrator technically is called, guys, or network administrator for what here network administrator so how to become network administrator if you want to become network administrator you have to do this course that is called tcna 
and CCNP lines. If you do the CCN and CCNP, you can say yourself as a or network administrator. So in CCN and CCNP lines, what you're learning? You're learning routing and switching lines. You're learning what you're routing and switching. So why we require switches? If within the organization types, if you have multiple machines, like two, 10, maybe 15, maybe 50, maybe 100 or more than that. So all the machines should be connected to each other by the help of switch, how to connect. And you have multiple branches, like one is in Hyderabad, one is in Hyderabad, one is in USA, right? And you want to connect to the multiple branches to each other then you're going to learn what here ccnp course right? ccn and ccnp course so in ccn and ccnp course you're learning routing and switching and if you have multiple branches in different different location different areas right if you want to connect these branches to each other so we require routers by the help of router we can connect one branch to other branch and we can connect our private network our own branch to internet also right here that is what here ccn and ccnp here uh this is from under hardware networking yes uh hardware and networking uh if you've done basic course kaja only hardware networking that is called what here desktop administrator but if you do the ccna ccnp course this also is coming under hardware networking but it's not called desktop administrator it's called a network administrator okay because your job is what managing the router switches connectivity also right and which user should access outside network data that you're going to do here. Okay, so if you do this course, uh, CCNA, CCNP, you can say you are the network administrator. Okay, now guys, if you do this MCSC course, system admin, if you do this CCNA, CCNP course, you can say network admin. But what is your day to day job, guys, here? Your job is what? Managing on premises network here. So within the organization, you have our devices, routers, switches, systems, you're going to manage, okay? And these courses are IT fund, IT profession courses, and this is a foundation course of IT, right? And from first day onwards, this course uh, is evergreen, guys. And uh, it is means, uh, yes, Khaja. Uh, CCNA, CCNP is going to cover Cisco, okay? So guys, if you want to enter in IT, right? If you want to do the job in IT, right? And you want, nowadays competition is there. Every year, company is saying we require multi-talented administrator. So if you do this course, like system admin, network admin, yes, you can say, yes, I can manage my own network. Because you are the administrator, you're going to design, you're deploying, you're managing a network. In your network, you have servers, you have clients, you have routers, which is you're going to manage, okay? So every company is searching multi-talented administrator. So if you do this course, system admin, network admin, you can say you are the best. And really, you will get the job very easily, quickly, guys. But guys, now you can see here the companies, the organizations are moving to the cloud. So in our net, in our market, guys, this course is also is very good. And in this area, you have a lot of jobs and good salaries also right here. That is called uh, here IT. Cloud administrator, IT cloud. And this IT cloud administrator, I'm writing only admin guys here. So if you want to become IT cloud administrator, right? First we have to do MCSC course and CCNA course. If you have good knowledge, then you can go for this IT cloud administrator. Now, what is the job of this IT cloud administrator? You're deploying, you're managing your network in the cloud, guys. Example, right now, after completing MCSC course, after completing hardware networking, we are deploying, we are creating our networking on premises within the organization, mm -hmm. right? Within the organization. Okay. But now we are deploying our network in the cloud. So if our network, if you want our network in the cloud, so it means we want our servers in the cloud, right? Because nowadays cloud is a cheaper, guys. I think you heard this course, cloud computing course, guys. Did you heard this word, cloud computing? Did you heard this, guys, cloud computing? Yes. Yes. So if you do this course here, IT, 
cloud administrator, you can say you can manage your network in the cloud. So it means you're networking on premises also, guys. You're networking the cloud. So it means some servers. For example, here. Uh, assume it. This is your on premises network. You have some servers here. Example, your domain controller. I will show you when I'm coming to the practical guy what is domain controller server. Uh, you have one file server here and you have number of clients. Okay, this is your on premise. But you are the administrator, you are the system admin, you are managing all this network. When you're creating the user account, this user can log into this. But after some time, your boss is saying, sir, purchasing the servers. Servers means hardware server guys. And really, hardware servers are very expensive, right? Very expensive. Okay. As if this this project is for six months. For six months, you require nearly six servers. How many servers? Six servers. So purchasing the six server is very expensive in the real time. But what you can do, guys, you can do one thing. You can take the help of cloud providers. You can take the help of cloud providers, guys. You can take the help of cloud providers. So it means you're creating your network in data centers. Okay, you're creating a, like there are so many cloud providers are there, guys, in the market. You can take the help of uh, Microsoft Azure, guys. You can take the help of AWS. You can take the help of Google, guys. You can take the help of IBM. There are so many out there. Okay. But example, I'm going for Microsoft Azure because it's a, everything is graphical, guys. Because of why my people like to Microsoft? Because all the things are in keyboard mouse we can manage. If you're not having good knowledge also, Microsoft documents, labs, everything is on graphical. Okay. So easily we can manage. So I'm going for Microsoft Azure service, guys. Okay. So I'm taking the help of Microsoft Azure. And by the help of Microsoft Azure, I'm creating the server thing, Microsoft Data Center. For example, uh, one backup server here I need. So I'm saying my backup server. That is called ADC. So if I create one user account in my DC, the same user accounts are available in ADC. So like this, I want one storage server in the cloud. I want one web server in the cloud. Right? I want one SQL server in the cloud. So on your demand, you can increase your server guys whenever you want. Okay. Now this on-premises network is connected to the cloud, but I'm not going for cloud class guys. Just I'm explaining to you what is actual job of system uh, cloud administrator. So we connected this network via van over the internet. So in future guys, whenever my DC domain controller, this on-premise server is down, when the users are logging, the users will take the authentication from this server and backup server will give authentication user can log in here okay what is cloud you are creating your on premises network in in the data centers guys which data center maybe you are taking the help of aws right you're taking the help of azure you're taking the help of google uh, company you're taking the help of ibm you are creating and now guys here your storage server is available here web server is available here now the users can log into this pcs on premises your organizations in your organization users are working you are logging here and you can access your file server you can access your cloud storage server you can store you can access your web server guys you can access sql okay now what is here we have to pay how many hours we are running these servers guys in the cloud we have to pay that much amount on like pay as you go how many minutes you are using how many hours we are using we can pay this much amount guys here okay this is a cheaper and in future guys in six, after six months i don't want these cloud servers Yes, I can delete all the servers. I don't want the servers. I can purchase new servers. I can configure the new servers. But guys, just is an overview here. What is a cloud administrator? So it means as a IT cloud administrator, I'm creating some servers in on-premises, guys. I'm creating some servers in the cloud. I'm managing both servers, guys. And whenever the migration is there, I want to move this on-premises server to the cloud. Yes, you can move. That is called live migration, right? You can do the migration also. That is a job of a cloud administrator. So, guys, here, uh, who is asking this question? 
what minimum bandwidth we need to access the server's application in the cloud. Uh, one G, uh, you require 40 Mbps or uh, 50 Mbps is enough. But nowadays we have GBs of in, uh, speed of internet time, 1 GB, 2 GB, 3 GB, because in our home, we're using 40 Mbps, 30 Mbps internet line. But in the corporate network, we are using a 5 GB internet line, 10 GB internet line, right? Or more than that we are using here, okay? That is enough to connect. But when you're coming to the cloud classes, guys, I will teach you in depth this course, what is a cloud administrator, okay? Depend on your bandwidth usage, how much data you're transferring, that much speed you require. If you feel slow, you can increase your speed here. But we have a, on uh, when you're taking the internet line, guys, or you know, for organization, we are using corporate lease internet line. The internet lines are very fast from here. Now, guys, so as a IT cloud administrator, my job is what? I'm creating my own private network servers in the cloud, guys, right? And those servers are called uh, you can say technically virtual servers right? or virtual machines you can say by the help of that we are creating our network but when you come into the azure classes guys i am also teaching azure also every month uh, every month 38 guys 30 we are starting this azure classes you can join there also but to learn azure microsoft azure guys you require this one what we require uh, mcse system administration knowledge you require networking knowledge like CCNA knowledge, IP addressing knowledge, then you can do this uh, course guys here. A basic knowledge of CCNA, right? If you have basic knowledge of CCNA and if you have good knowledge in MCSE system admin, you can do this course IT cloud administrator. And really guys, if you search the jobs and if you ask your colleagues or friends, right? What are the good openings are there? Good salaries are there in the market? So they're saying we require IT cloud admin. But remember guys, Without learning MCSE, Linux, you cannot become cloud administrator because you are creating your on-premises server in the cloud, right? So I will show you how to create the servers in the cloud, but how to create the servers services, I will show you in system, in MCSE course. Now guys, we are creating network in on-premises, we are creating network in the cloud, but we require security also because whatever data we transfer from on-premises to the cloud or one PC to other PC within the organization, right? And our organization are connected to internet also. So, so many users are connecting from outside to inside things over the internet to your private network also to access the data. So we require security, right? And hackers should be not hack your data. It should be not cheated anyone. So we require, we require uh, IT security administrator, guys. We require IT security. And in this also, guys, there are so many openings are there good salaries companies are ready to pay here also. So how to become IT security administrator? So you have to do CCSP course guys. If you do the CCSP, cyber security profession, security course guys, right? If you do the cyber security uh, profession course, you will become here IT security admin. So here you're learning here in CCSP, you're learning how to protect your network. If any hacker is attacking on your network, right? So how to understand? how the hacker is coming, what ways the hacker is using, how they are attacking, how to block this hacker. So it means 25% to 30%, you will become also hacker guys. Because if you want to understand to hacker attacks, you have to learn some hacking also guys. So ethical hacking course also we are covering in CCSP course guys. If you join, if you join the CCSP course, you have ethical hacking plus uh, cyber security you're learning guys here. If anyone is uh, hacking ha attacking on your network, Right? What measures? What softwares? What tools? How to how to block this guy? Right? How to block this hacker to enter in our network here? Okay? How to patch up this one? So we are going to learn in CCS course. Okay, guys. So if you search the jobs, really, if you go to the market in our IT organizations, we have this many jobs: level one, level two, level three, cloud administrator and security guys. But guys, these courses like desktop administrator is a basic course, guys. But IT professional course are what? System admin, network admin. If you've done this course, you said system admin, network admin. You are the administrator who is going to manage your on-premises network. But if you want to move your network to the cloud, you have to learn cloud admins like Microsoft Azure or AWS or Google Cloud. You have to learn. You can move your network to the cloud. But if you want to secure your network, you have to learn IT security admin. And guys, really, if you go for these jobs, 
IT cloud admin and security admin. The companies are paying uh, compared to the system admin five times more here. The companies are ready, but we require good knowledge. If you're not having experience, no problem, guys. But we require good technical knowledge, configuration knowledge, troubleshooting. We require. Okay, if you. So, guys, your target should be what here? Not only system admin, network admin. You have to become IT cloud administrator or security admin. So then you can survive in the market, and you will get a good salary also, right? You will get in the market. And there are so many companies Hyderabad uh, in India. Uh, in Hyderabad also guys and in Bangalore also Noida also in Delhi also there's so many companies that are there who are ready to pay good salaries for this admin administrators. So guys in this course uh, we are learning MCSE and after completing this MCSE course we can say ourselves as what here Microsoft system administrator. Okay guys so what is our course duration guys right how many hours what we have even for that uh mr khaja you are saying it security admin means you have to learn ethical hacking not only ethical hacking you have to learn cyber security professional course also in ethical hacking just you are learning the hacking ticks how the hacker but how to block how to take the measures you have to learn in cyber security okay so guys we are learning in this course we are learning mcse and after completing mcse we can see ourselves as a microsoft system administrator so guys our course is MCSE course and this course is a one month course guys today we are starting the course on 17th August and till 14th of September we have this course okay and <clears throat> daily we have a session on 6 a.m. early morning guys to 8 a.m. but sometime guys I need some extra timing like please allow to me uh, for uh, 15 20 minutes extra guys for some classes okay so I can complete the class I can completely theory I can explain with the labs right I will teach for some classes 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. this is our session right here and daily we have two hour class guys daily we have two hour class and in this class guys we are learning here theory for theory guys and we are learning the labs also and all these labs guys whatever the lab we are discussing 100 percent we can do all these labs and all these labs are real time labs guys. so what is the meaning of real time guys after completing this course if you're joining to any organization and your boss your management is saying make one domain controller make one active directory server easily you can make guys if anyone is saying make one web server you can say yes i know that how to make if anyone is saying join this machine to domain how to make the client how to make member server yes you can make if anyone is saying create the user account types of user account groups organization unit applying permissions policies really you can manage so whatever we are practical we are doing guys here whatever we're learning labs the same labs we have to do in real time guys because after your interview is done you join to one company your day-to-day -day job is what deployment and management your services the same deployment management services we are discussing here in our course guys and all the labs are real time labs here. okay so don't say that sir uh, i'm making one server now in the when i'm learning this course i'm doing the practical i'm making one server right if anyone is asking the same server making the cloud or uh, making the organization right how to make what is the configuration what is the requirement the requirement configuration everything steps are same guys here okay and the next thing is what here the student will ask this question also sir okay we are learning theory in theory i will give you the theory with examples guys when we require in which scenario we require okay these services and then we'll go to the labs guys once you understand the theory then we'll go to the labs but here i will teach you troubleshooting also guys so many student will ask sir troubleshooting is very very important here now actually what is troubleshooting guys here whenever you face any error any problem if you resolve that that is called what troubleshooting here so we'll do one thing we'll generate some errors right right we'll read the errors we'll try to understand and then we'll troubleshoot so the real time guys when you're going to organization when deploying the servers when you're working you will face the same type of errors so once you know the errors once you know the solution once you resolve right then in next time if you're getting the same error same problem 
Now tell me, first time when you're trying to resolve this problem, maybe it's going, maybe it's going to take one hour time. Okay, but the same error, once again you're facing next day or maybe after some time in your organization. You know the error, you know the solution. So how much time you will take guys to resolve the problem? Again, one hour? No guys, within one minute, within two minutes or less than five minutes, we can quick and we can troubleshoot the problem. So I will generate some errors for you guys, right? I will tell you, I will teach you how to understand these errors, how to troubleshoot these errors, and I will generate some errors. So you have to give the answer, you can troubleshoot. So it means in this course, in this course, we are learning theory with examples, with scenario based guys, and all the labs I'm going to show you practically and troubleshooting also. And guys, I will tell you how you're going to do the labs. Whatever the labs I'm doing guys here, the same labs you're going to do in your PCs also. But what is the uh, requirement? It's basic requirement is guys here, when coming to the uh, labs, I will show you how to design your network in your laptop and how to do all these labs, what I'm showing here in the labs in one month. The same labs, you can do all these labs in your, in your desktop PC or you're doing the lab, laptop also guys here, okay? This is one guys here and uh, I have some material guys here. Uh, I will show you some materials and I will show you some documents also. Time to time, whenever the requirement is there, I will share you this material documents, right? Uh, and some lab manual also is there with me. I will share you this lab manual also with you. So by the help of this lab manual, you can do all the labs. But I want without lab manual, you have to try to do the lab first because you're learning, you are, you are attending to our class, right? And after, if you face any, if you face any problem, okay, I'm instructing here, you can see the lab manual, you can see the steps, you can do the practice. And guys, a daily when you come into the class to attend this session, bring one notebook and one pen, wherever I'm giving some important points here, right? Where I'm giving the diagrams here. So you can draw the diagrams, write the important short notes, not all the steps, guys, short notes. And, you can, when you're doing the practical, see this one is very comfortable for you when you're doing the labs. And guys, this class. So I'm recording this class, guys, for you. Right? And one recording copy, video recording we are doing, guys, here. Okay? So we are doing the video recording. So after the class is completed, guys, here, uh, you will get the recording copy. Uh, on your register uh, email address guys here so on your registered email address we'll give you the copy to you to so google drive will send you okay but after the class completed immediately you will not get the recording just you have to wait for some hours one or two hour okay so within one or two hour on your registered email id guys and please provide your uh gmail id guys here because through gmail uh, Google Drive will send you this copy, guys, to you. And when you're listening this copy, you can feel very comfortable. And again, you can write down all these uh, notes and copies, guys. You will get. Okay. Uh, how to send your email address? I'm, I'm giving one form to you, guys. You can see in my chat box. I'm sending one link to you, guys. This is MCSC uh, form, guys, for requesting for lab. Uh, sorry for requesting for your recording here so you can see on the screen guys just what you have to do to send these details you can see everyone you can see this um, link i have sent one link to you in the chat box guys please use this link go to the browser and paste this link this is the link guys hit enter and you will get like this page okay it's you are requesting for our mcsa plus mcs stands microsoft certified solution associate guys but we are learning MCSE course, professional course here, okay? So you're requesting for MCSE class, just we have to write. And everyone, you have to do it. Then only you will get the recording, guys. Otherwise, you will not get the recording. Don't write uh, email address in the chat box, guys. Please, I'm, I already uh, sent. And again, I'm sending here in the chat box. Please, everyone, see the chat box. And note down this link. And paste this link in the chat uh, in your browser guys you will get like this page you have to fill the page it's a small form page guys just fill this page write your name example ahmed write your email address guys example like this ahmed uh, 
uh, at the rate gmail.com right keep the gmail address then then write your contact number right your mobile number you have to write there okay then uh write batch timing uh you're attending early morning guys 6 a.m okay so select 6 a.m here okay timing is batch timing 6 a.m and here guys uh are you an existing student of zoom say no i'm not existing student guys and in the last line guys if you observe here you if you are existing student of zoom tech uh, please give your zoom id but right now you're not having any zoom id guys here you have to write uh uh requesting for mcsc mcsc recording guys here yeah. mcsc class recording okay okay just you have to write like this guys and click on segment once you click segment guys uh we'll get your name we'll get your email address we'll get your mobile number and we'll send you the recording copy to you guys if you're not give this information we can't send guys okay i need your information you have to fill guys very easy guys i've already if you are existing student also you have to send guys if you're doing other courses uh guys you have to do other courses for other links they their faculty their teacher will they will give you the new links so that you have to register but this is for mcsc okay so once again i'm uh sending this uh record uh email this link guys for recording so just write your name very easy email address your mobile number guys and your batch is 6 a.m and see uh i'm not an existing student you have to say no here and in the last line don't worry any don't write anything just you have to write this one requesting for mcsc recording class recording okay once you send once you click submit we'll get your email uh, your details will on your registered email address and keep the gmail address guys here on that we'll send you okay if you're done very good guys yes i'm giving one minute two minutes guys please fill this one everyone has to do this one so we can send the recording to you okay uh, uh, sorry uh, we are yes. all like existing students right right we have to okay. select yes right no problem guys you can select no there is no problem if you're existing student also select no okay okay no problem if you're existing also select no Thank <clears throat> done this guys so you have to fill this form which is have given this chat box 
once you fill this form we'll send you the recording copy okay very good everyone has you don't need to do every day just you have to do first on your first day now today you no need to fill all this form again and again you have to fill just now uh, i send the link uh, so if someone has joined just now to this class i have sent one link in the chat box please see there don't send your email address to me in the chat box just use this link and fill this form what you have to do uh, in this link you paste this link in the browser you have to write your name your email address gmail id okay gmail account you have to write and your mobile number guys your batch is what 6 am select there then your say that i'm not a being student of zoom here send a copy and in the last line uh right here requesting for mcsc class recording and set this. okay then raul you have to go here this link you have to fill okay now guys come here back so guys our classes are from from monday to saturday guys our classes from monday to saturday okay so daily we have two hour session guys here from monday to saturday only sundays we are not having any class here okay uh in this course guys one more thing here in this course uh because if you go to the market if you search the market guys some of the companies are asking uh, we require linux knowledge also basics of Linux. so in this course guys i am teaching you uh four weeks all four weeks right the complete four weeks we are learning mcs okay complete four weeks we are learning but the last week guys please try to understand last week i am adding the basics of linux right i am adding what here basics of linux good okay so complete four weeks means one month we are learning mcs including mcs last week guys i am adding what here linux so i want you should be a perfect uh, basically in the linux also because if anyone is asking in the interview uh, are you know linux you should say yes i know that how to install the linux os i know that how to manage the linux in linux how to create example in mcsc how to create tscp dns server web server the same thing how to create the in linux also by using linux server operating system how to create web server dns server tscp server how to manage we can how to apply permission so you should be in the uh knowledge should be guys right? how to use the linux operating system so that's why because in the market we have a competition when you go to the market some of the companies saying uh, i'm using mcsc right okay yes you can manage microsoft server some of the companies are saying i'm using mcs microsoft os also servers also and linux also you should be there in to manage the mcsc and linux servers also guys here okay that's why i added the last week basics of linux here okay i'm going to teach you what is the basics of linux how to work on linux operating system now guys so if anyone has joined here uh first two days guys this is a demo session means a free class guys not demo session, free class for you we can attend this class here you will get the recording also but third day guys we are going to change the link password once you done the registration guys so you have to complete the registration once you've done the registration you will get the new passwords to log into this class guys so with the new passwords my management will send the new password by the help of this new password once your registration is done right so once your registration is done completely you will get the new password with the new password you can log in guys and between the session guys when you're logging if you're not getting new password already you registered you're not getting new password if you're facing any problem in the logins guys and you're not received the recordings so please i'm sharing one number with you guys this is my management number uh miss lavanya her name so she is going to take care of the sending the recording everything and link so her number is 789 you can note down guys this number double three double nine eight 
double replies, right? This is WhatsApp number also. He can send the WhatsApp messages also, right? Uh, you will get the answer. If you're unable to log in, if you're facing the problem in the logins, or if you're facing the problem, right, recordings do not receive, you can call here. And I'm sharing my number also, guys, here. Uh, this is my mobile number, WhatsApp number. If you face any problem anytime, guys, when you're doing the labs, or if you have any questions, you can ask me on this number. I will help you. This is my number 9010760680. This is my mobile number. It's my WhatsApp number also. So if you have any uh, doubts, any questions, right? Right, I can clear to you. Oh, uh, someone is asking the question. What Ansar is asking question? Please post your question in the everyone so everyone can see your questions. I can give the reply to you. He's asking, sir, if someone has enrolled in the Linux course, then right, it is going to be a detail or with cover only one one week we are covering guys if we have separate linux also in separate lines that is called advanced linux in that more topics are covering but here we are covering basics topics code linux we are discussing here okay sir but our more concentration is uh, our courses details is uh, we are learning here mcs but linux just we added to cover the installation uh, to cover what is the uh, services how we are going to work how to log in how to create the users basics i will show you here okay guys uh, here any question any doubt here i mean uh, when okay, we will get this registration so if you link, have any question uh, uh, what sorry I mean, do we get any link for the registration now or? No, I have already sent in the chat box. You can see in the chat box. I have already uh, for registration. You have to contact okay. to the, uh, you have received the mail from pre at the red zoom group dot com. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in there okay. you have a link for registration, right? You can go for registration, make the payments. And that payment you can do by online uh, by using net banking, Google uh, Pay is there, PayPal is there. Right, use your options. You can make it. If you face any problem in the payments, you can contact to Miss Lavanya. She will help you. That we did it already. Right. How to right. make the uh, already you're done. That's it. Okay. That is called registration here. If you free the fee, uh -huh. the registration is done. Uh -huh. Then you will get the recording automatically. Okay. okay. Right. So, guys, this is what our uh, schedule we have here. Now. I see that after completing our MCSC course, we can say ourselves as what here? Microsoft System Administrator, uh, Windows System Administrator, we can say. Now, guys, uh, as a system administrator, uh, in the Linux, I was asking question, installation I will cover, DNS, DHCP will cover, FTP also will cover, Satya. Yes, we'll cover this one. This topic, yes, we'll cover. Okay. So, guys, uh, as a system administrator, our day to day job is what here? Uh, managing the servers. Okay, as a system admin. If I'm saying, uh, clearly, my job is what? In my network, I have to design, I have to deploy my network here, yeah, right? And what my network contain, guys? Servers, different, different types of servers, users, user management, client management, permissions, managing the profile of the users. Right, then guys, making the web servers, FTP servers, HTTP server, HTTPS websites, uh, managing the storage. And here, guys, in this course, I'm going to show you a virtualization also, guys, how to make your virtual network here. That is very, very important nowadays. I'm going to show before going Azure, before going AWS, right, before going Google Cloud course, you have to learn virtualization, guys. And many topics like we have, like VPN, like this, etc. So many are there. 
we are going to discuss. So this is our administrator job basically. So it means as an administrator, uh, in my organization, I'm going to design my own network. We have number of servers. In our organization, guys, we have number of machines are connected physically to each other. And my users, my employees are going to log in here. Okay. So it means basically I'm going to deal with the computers. So if anyone is asking this question, guys, to you, what is computer? So whenever I'm using the word computer, guys, I'm computer means not a desktop, your laptop, guys. I'm saying here servers also here. So computer means servers. Our machines also we call computers. So basically the computer is designed for compute guys. Means process. Now what is the history of this computer when this computer is designed guys? So this computer is designed in 19th century guys. And designed by the help of uh, these guys guys. We know that uh, Charles Babbage is the father of the computer. Okay. In 19th century Charles Babbage has designed the computer side. And the first generation of the computer guys is came in the market. You see the history, 1937. And this computer purely uh, is designed by the help of 18,000 vacuum tubes. Guys. It's designed by the help of 18,000 vacuum. Yeah. Okay, so it means this server is very big size, guys. And very large also is very expensive also if you want to place this server in your organization we require a big hall size area so we can place this servers this computer and we are arranging all the tubes one by one we are arranging all the uh tubes one by one one by one right side by side so it's going to take very big size this room we require place this server and if you believe or not the weight of this computer is nearly 30 tons the weight of this server. okay now tell me in 1937 you're working as an administrator for this organization and your organization is having this server and you one day your boss is saying please we are moving this server from one department to other department, one floor to other floor. Right? Now tell me guys, easily, uh, can you move? Easily, can you carry this out? No guys, it's very, uh, very heavy weight is there and it's very large. Easily one person cannot move here. By day by day, technology has changed. So many engineers, professors, uh, experts, engineers has worked on this technology. It's become a day by day compact size, like second generation of the computer in the market size. In 1947, right? And this computer is designed by the help of transistor. By the help of transistor, this computer has designed right here. Then third generation of the computer is came in the market in 1963 guys and this computer is designed by the help of your integrated circuit board okay it's designed by the help of integrated circuit boards here so we have like motherboards are there in our mobile in our uh, desktop machines in electronic machines that type of motherboards are there or boards are there integrated circuit boards is designed and the fourth generation of the computer is came in the market guys in 1980s and this computer is designed by the help of processors it's designed by the help of processors guys nowadays we are using processors like we are using intel processor amd processor right by the help of these processes our computer is design uh, technology you can say only right i uh, generation a generation 10 technology is changing and the speed capacity working is changing here okay so that is called what here uh generation and you can see here guys here 
uh, when the fourth generation computers came in the market, 1980s guys. So that is designed by the help of processors. In processor, there are so many types of architectures like uh, i3, i5, i7, uh, uh, or you can say i9, i10, Xeon processor, Optron processors. There are so many out there, guys. Okay, this is design. And guys, still here. Try to understand here. Still here in 1963, guys. Still here in 1963. That or Till 1980s, you can say actually, not, not 1963, till 1980s. You can say the computers are designed and uh, developed only for big organizations, big university. Because these servers are very expensive server guys. These servers are very expensive. And these servers are designed, these computers are designed for uh, big organizations like university, defense people, army people, or uh, big industries companies are purchasing is very expensive okay but this computer is till 1980 is not designed for home purpose and for office purpose for a small home but in 1980s guys here after 1980s you can say the computer is designed for home purpose also and the computer is designed for your office purpose so we have a small computer after 1980 guys here in 1980s you can say small computer designed for home purpose for office but who designed guys now before that try to understand you already know this company guys that is what ibm already ibm has designed their main frame servers guys ibm already has designed their mainframe server and this means in 1960s guys in 1960s you can say ibm already has designed their mainframe servers and these servers are very expensive guys very large right for multitasking we are using and to run these servers ibm is having os also ibm is having operating system to run this servers guys operating system is a software to run this servers but in 1980s guys ibm has designed the small computer ibm is designed the small computer and the small computer name is pc that is called personal computer guys it's a two feet tower type computer nowadays what we are using guys here Right, it's a compact size, it's a two feet tower computer. IBM has designed a small computer, personal computer for our home purpose for office. But remember, guys, computer means is a hardware device, is a hardware machine. But tell me to run this hardware machine, we require software or not? Right, and that software is called operating system. Right, for what your operating system? So, IBM is having operating system to run these servers, but IBM is not having any operating system to run these small computer PCs. So IBM has given the task to Microsoft. So Microsoft has designed and built one operating system to run this machine. And this operating system is called MS-DOS. For what here? MS-DOS. So here, I came here to this option because to learn this one, what is it? So the Microsoft started their career. The Microsoft started their business from 90s, 80, 1980s, guys, you can say, OK? And the Microsoft has designed the first operating system, and this operating system is called MS DOS. MS DOS stands Microsoft Desktop Operating System. Now, guys, anyone know the desktop operating system is a graphical base or is a command base, guys? This operating system, MS DOS, is a command base. Are you using nowadays, guys, this operating system? Sometime, yes. How you can see this is a graphical because Microsoft has built the graphical. You can see on your screen this is a graphical by using keyboard mouse. You're using, but if you go to the CMD, if you type CMD, so you open this one. So if you write something here, it means you are running on a desktop, you are running on your uh, you can say you're running on command based operating system. You can see like this, guys. Here, so this is your command based, okay? So Microsoft operating system nowadays we can use with uh, command based also. We can use mostly 98% of the company's users in the world are trusting on Microsoft because Microsoft operating system is a friendly graphical operating system. Not only operating system, guys, motto of the Microsoft is giving services, services, softwares, applications to all these softwares, applications are compatible with every device and is a friendly user graphical of services guys right so that's why the most of the companies if i'm not wrong 85 to 90 percent of the companies 
home users are trusting on Microsoft because the Microsoft operating system is a friendly graphical operating system and services also. Can. Okay, so you can say the computer history actually started in 19th uh, century, guys, and designed by Charles Babbage. Day by day, technology has changed, right? And nowadays, our servers, our machines are become very compact size, very small size, very powerful, multitasking we can do, guys. And all the Microsoft operating system, Microsoft has been so many OS, like Windows 8, Windows 10, XP, right? And these operating systems are our graphical, server 2.12, 2.16. Right, these operating systems are all operating systems are graphical operating system guys here so if anyone is asking this uh, question guys to you uh, like a basic question right so what is computer Right, so what is computer, guys? So computer is a machine, maybe a desktop, maybe a laptop, maybe a server. Right, it's called what here? Computer here. So if anyone is saying what is computer, you can say computer is an electronic device which take input by using input devices to input devices and process it and give output to output device. Like we are the end user, okay? By using keyboard mouse, we are giving the input. And the computer is doing the process. And after process ten, the computer will give the output to us, right? Uh, on our screen, we have output here by using output devices, screen, uh, printer, projector, by the help of. And guys, here computer also store the data for future process here. For example, nowadays, guys, uh, can you say anyone uh, where the computer are not using? Maybe you're using small, medium, large organization without computer can you start your business guys now in 2020 i'm saying here any business can you start with computer no guys okay but if i ask the same question in 1995 in 1995 if i have the same question without computer can you start your business what you will say guys? in 1995 you will say yes and in 1995 i'm asking sir what is mobile without mobile can you start your day what you will say in 1995 in 1995 without mobile can you start your day yes you would say in 1995 no one is know what is mobile without mobile we can start the day but in olden days guys right we are using the pen and paper to do the maths to do the calculation to do the product uh, information to collect but guys in 2020 if i ask this question without mobile can you start your day if i say without mobile can you start your day you will say no okay we need compulsory mobile here because early morning whenever i wake up so first what we'll see guys we'll see our mobile then i will start our day right like this without computer guys here without computer we cannot start our business maybe a business is small medium or too large okay every you can see best example banks guys previously when you go to the banks how the banks are working uh like 15 years back right my account is available in hyderabad in HDFC bank, I have to go to the HDFC bank, bank Hyderabad. And if I ask the person, bank people, I want my one year statement or one month statement, they will say, okay, right. Uh, okay, sir, we'll give you the information to you, give you account name and number, uh, we'll give you. But the banks are maintaining my information in the big books, big lecture books are there. Analog books are there, guys, here. By using these books there, okay, big large books are there. They are maintaining the customer entry and they are seeing and they are giving the answer to you. Okay, so it's going to take a lot of time here. But nowadays, if you go to the banks, all the banks are maintaining the customer information in their servers. Okay, in their servers. So if you ask to the bank people, uh, I want my information, I want my one year statement, they will say, Yes, I have. Just give you account name and name. And within less than five minutes, guys, within five minutes or less than five minutes they will give the reply previously is taking hours of time maybe at least one hour they'll give the answer but now within five minutes our job is done and nowadays guys you can see here uh previously if you want to do banking in 15 years back you have to go always to your home branch to do the banking but now you can see anywhere in the corner of the world can you do the banking or not yes how is possible 
by using bank servers banks are maintaining the web servers guys websites so by using this website over the internet can you access this website anywhere yes secondly can you transfer the money from one account to another account yes can you check your statement also yes it's possible by the help of these servers guys here right and servers are storing your data also guys whenever you want in future you can access after five years guys if you go to the bank and tell the bank i want my last two years statement yes they are ready to give the answer and nowadays guys you can see here if you store your data uh in if you store your data in your your mails your personal data in google drive guys or your mails are available in gmail right and from gmail account by using this transfer the data from one person to other person yes guys but previously guys what we are using we are not using gmail we are not using microsoft outlook we are using post office if you want to send the uh, a letter to my brother and my brother is staying in other country guys usa so i have to go to the gpo from gpo we have to post and these gpo people are taking a lot of time at least one week to transfer my mail from india to usa but if you have account in gmail and i'm telling to my brother create one account in gmail and through this gmail account i'm sending the data my family pictures or some important documents i'm sending here so this data will transfer quick very fast from one person to other person one country to other country and how much time is taking guys less than one minute less than one minute through this gmail account our data is transferred and is possible by the help of this servers guys now the second thing here the computers are working by the help of binary language like zeros and one but we are giving out input in our language we are getting output in our language by using softwares but ba background computer language binary guys computer is like an electronic device guys all electronic device right a computer also electronic device and working with direct current power supply dc power supply means direct current power supply we require to work on this computer guys okay without power supply we cannot work here this is a computer if you unplug the power cable of your pc or your server guys it's going to work no but laptops are working because we have a battery but after some time the laptop also is going to down if your power supply is not properly there, guys. okay now how the computers are working guys here you can see it in this block diagrams here the end user how the servers machines are working guys here the end user we are giving the input means we are getting giving some data so today is the first first class of mcc guys i am not going for too advanced topic just i'm going for basic introduction i will show you the end of this class and when i'm coming i will show you uh, what are the topics we are going to cover in, in this whole one month in mcc guys here okay just today is a basic introduction class here so we are the input we are the user we are giving some data to our computer to do the process so that request will go to cpu that is called central processing unit uh why i'm going for this introduction class guys basic class because i want you should be feel comfortable from tomorrow onwards when i start the topics server creation user management deploy you should you should be feel comfortable when i'm saying make servers make users make member servers client make web servers you should say okay sir uh i need uh this hardware i need this processor how the background process going to work so you should be understand that one okay again and again i will not teach you this basic things just today i'm going to show you okay what is the basic requirement here because before installing anything first we have to check the hardware configuration before hardware configuration we have to understand the hardware that i am teaching today here okay so guys uh, cpu we require central processing unit in that we have three parts control unit memory and alu arithmetical logical unit guys so the first request will go to our memory guys when you send the data request will go to memory memory will store the data then memory will forward the request to control unit. Control unit will forward the request to ALU, arithmetical logical units. Then they will do the process. Then it will give back to control unit, control unit to memory, and memory to output. So we are the end user. We are getting the output by using print or screen. We are getting our output. We are getting our data. There. Okay. So this is the background process of our computer guys here. Now, how to make a computer, guys? Example, after this course is completed, you're going to organization, you're working in organization, your boss is saying, uh, we need some servers. Your boss is saying, we need some servers. Your boss is saying, we need some servers. We need some clients. We need some servers. We need some clients. So these are the hardware machines. So first, we have to know the hardware. 
right? What is the hardware components we need in our computers, in our servers kind here? So what is the hardware component guys here? So in our machine, we require motherboard guys. That is very, very important. We need, we need processor that is important guys here. Okay. So first we'll discuss what is motherboard guys here. Anyone knows that what is motherboard? You know guys, what is motherboard? If you open your PC, right? If you open your PC, you can find a big board here. Big board. This big board is called motherboard here. Right? Now what is motherboard contain guys? Uh yes, it's a chipset also you can say it's a big board, you can say. This motherboard contains all the other components. This motherboard is holding all the other components. This motherboard contains all the other components, guys. Here, uh, you can see here, guys, on the screen. I'm sharing one board here. You can see these are the motherboard we have. Okay, so if you open your PC, laptop, you can find this type of ports are available right here. Okay, this type of board is available here. Okay, so this board, this complete board, is called what here? Your motherboard. There are so many companies are there who is uh, leading this motherboard here. There are so many companies are in the market. Here. Okay, so motherboard contain board time. A motherboard is a plastic, plastic circuit board, guys. Motherboard contains your processor. Your processor is going to be a P4 processor. Your RAMs, your fixes. Okay. To the processor. RAMs we can see here. Your hard disk, guys. You can attach the hard disk. Right? Hard disk. You can attach to your motherboard. Guys. Okay. Keyboard mouse. You can fix the motherboard. Input output devices like USB. Okay, your audio option, right? VG option connecting to the monitor, right? So these options are available, guys. Input output devices are available on this motherboard here. Your internet also, you can connect. NAC cards are available to connect. So, if you see here, if anyone is asking what is motherboard here, so you have to say motherboard is a main circuit board of our machine. Maybe a PC, maybe a laptop, maybe a server is the main board. Now it controls all the physical devices and components that are connected directly, indirectly. Directly means what? Direct devices means what? Our processor, RAM, hard disk directly we are connecting to our motherboard, guys. Indirect devices means what, guys? Sometime to this motherboard, I want to connect my mobile. How I'm connecting mobile? By using USB cable. I want to connect the printer. To this machine i'm using usb cable i want to connect from one computer to other computer how we are connecting by using lan cable guys right we are connecting this is called what indirect devices so guys direct devices are what cpu processor that is called ram hard disk expansion cards are connected like audio card video card nac card we can connect okay then motherboards are coming in the different different form factors because if there are so many companies are there in the market who is designing this motherboard. Like Asus is there, Intel is there, AMD is there, Gigabyte is there, Mercury is there. This many companies are there. On request of the customers, use of the customer, these companies are designing the motherboard. Like you're using the PC for home purpose. You will go for basic motherboard. I'm using laptop wise. I require basic motherboard. My company requires server. We require advanced, high professional or more features motherboard guys we require here so there are so many companies design this motherboard you can see this motherboard is called desktop motherboard this motherboard also is called what here desktop motherboard here this desktop motherboard especially used for our computers in our home purpose uh, we are using computers and on client machine also guys when you're using uh, in your organization you have some machines clients client means users are using this so there i can use this Okay, so in this motherboard, guys, I can fix only one processor. How many processor? One processor. And RAMs are limited, guys, like uh, maybe 8 GB RAM. Uh, two RAMs I can fix here. You can see two numbers. We have two RAM option, one and two here. Two RAMs I can fix here, maybe 8 GB, 16 GB, 
32 GB, not more than that here. Okay, one physical processor. Processor we can fix here, right? And hard disk guys here, I can fix the hard disk here. These are the yellow color slots, are called hard disk slots. I can fix the hard disk here. And how many hard disk you can fix? One, two, three, four. Four hard disks you can fix right here. Okay. So this is called your uh uh we can connect any uh, extra cards, right? Expansion cards like NAC card, audio card, video card. It's called PCA slots we can connect right here. Okay. So this so is our I have one question, Ahmed. So the motherboards of uh, desktops and the uh, laptop, uh, uh, the motherboards uh, will be same or is it different? No, different guys. Because shape okay. and features will be different here. Because this motherboard, I cannot fix from the laptop. Okay, that shape is different here. Okay, shape and design features are different here. So this motherboard is used for desktop. But tell me guys, this motherboard is suitable for home purpose. For your client side, you can use this motherboard. But tell me, guys, by using this motherboard, can I run my computer 24 by 7 continuously, 15 days, guys? Not right, run continuously for 15 days or for one week. Can I ever run? No, guys, because this motherboard is designed only for eight hours, nine hours. I can run this machine, that is okay. But we require restart, we require some cooling also, guys, right? So then this machine will work. Otherwise, if I run continuously, these components will be overheat, is going to burn, guys. Okay, this is a desktop. But guys, when I'm talking about servers, like my bank server, uh, my Facebook server, Gmail server, these servers are running 24 by 7 or not? Yes. So these motherboards are suitable? No. And the second thing, this motherboard can give the process only to a single user. But we require server motherboard, who is giving the service to multiple users, hundreds of users connect. So guys, this motherboard is not suitable. We require server motherboard. So you can see, this is my server motherboard. Now in server motherboard guys, you can see here, I have one processor, physical processor, two processor, three, four. So how many processor we can fix? Four processor guys. And you can see the number of RAMs we can fix here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this eight RAMs we can fix here. Here, this this RAMs are working for this processor guys. This RAMs are running for this processor. This eight RAMs are working for this processor. This eight RAMs are working for this processor guys. So we have multiple RAMs here. Number of RAMs we can fix here okay and now tell me guys can i run this machine 24 by 7 is going to work guys yes because this yes. motherboard is available for server side we can run 24 by 7 is not going to overheat the components are not going to burn guys you can use this okay this motherboard is very big size inexpensive guys and this motherboard generally we are not using on desktop and laptop guys we are using only for servers here okay now this is for motherboard guys for example my boss is saying sir we need a web server in my company but this server is going to run in a daytime in a daytime like uh, nine hours maximum not more than that so we require less processors motherboard less processor server motherboard so you can see in the market we have two processor mother server motherboard so this is also server motherboard guys but this motherboard contain two process okay one here one here and this one two one two four one two three four these four ramps are working for this processor guys and these four ramps are working for this processor here okay so this is a small motherboard you can say is my uh sir, motherboard for my uh small organization i'm running my server uh for five uh, ten hours less than ten hours guys like eight hours nine hours okay so this is suitable for you can you so motherboards are coming in different different form guys different from manufacturing sizes you can go for two processor motherboard or four processor motherboard or a single processor motherboard right here. okay so this is we need here now guys next what is the requirement here the next thing requirement is processor guys without processor we cannot work on this much because we can say processor is a I can say processor is a brain of the computer guys here because our body parts are working by the help of our brain right it's giving instruction working processor is your computer your servers are working by the help of processor the so processor is very very important what is actual processor guys is a small chip I can say yes is a small chip here we can say processor is a brain of the computer processor is a semiconductor devices and processor contain a complete CPU that is called central processing unit is a small chip. 
is a small chip size here. So this chip is called what here? Process. Previously, we are using 18,000 vacuum tubes. We are using transistors. We are using capac uh, We are using IT circuit boards to make it. But now we are using what here? Processor. So if anyone is saying how your computers are running, so you have to say my computers are running by that for processor guys here. Okay. And you can see a processor are doing the performing arithmetical and logical functions. What are the functions you are giving guys? Like two into two. The processor will say give the answer. If anywhere, anywhere you're writing something wrong, like your spelling is wrong, your words are wrong, the processor is saying underline, blue color lines you will get. It will say make this correction. You can make. Okay, this is a processor. Without processor, we cannot work in this guys. Now, when you're purchasing the processor, guys, right? What we have to check in processor, like basically you will go to the market, you will purchase, purchase, you will say, I want one motherboard. Uh, I want laptop, desktop. You will purchase the laptop, desktop. But in the laptop, desktop, what you are checking, guys? You're checking what? Uh, RAM, you're checking processor speed, right? Memory, you are checking. But actually, when you're purchasing the processor as administrator, as a system admin, you have to know this, guys. This is very, very important for you. When you're checking the processor, first check the specification of processor. In a specification of processor, you have to check the speed of processor, guys. What you have to check? Speed. Previously, guys, when processor is came in the market, previously in olden days, processor speed is measuring in hertz. Okay, then later on is measuring in megahertz. But nowadays, guys, is measuring in gigahertz, like a uh, two gigahertz processor, three gigahertz processor, guys, four gigahertz processor we have in the market, guys. Okay, nowadays we are purchasing the processor in gigahertz 2 gigahertz 3 gigahertz 4 gigahertz processor are there in the market guys. so this is called speed of the process now guys next is what width of the processor width means technology of the processor i will say right so what is the width of the processor guys so try to understand this one uh when the vendors are designing this processor guys there are two types of processors out there. One is called x86 technology processor, and one is called x64 technology, guys. x86, x64. x86 means that is 32 bit processor. Guys. x64 means 64 bit processor. So it means, bit means what? Bit means 0 or 1, combination of 0 1 because of a computer, right? Understand only zeros and ones, guys. Our computer will understand zeros and our servers also will understand zero. All electronic devices will understand zeros and ones. If I say my processor is x86, so it means 32 bit. So my processor will take 32 bit input, it will give 32 bit output, guys. If I say my processor is 64 bit, it will take 64 bit input, it will give the 64 bit output to you guys here. Okay, if I say my processor is 64 bit, so it will take 64 bit input, it will give the 64 bit output also. Okay. The same way, the software developers and OS designers like Microsoft, Linux, these companies are designing the softwares and OS on two options, right? One is on 32 bit and one is on 64 bit. So it means if your processor is 32 bit, you can use 32 bit OS and software. If your processor is 64 bit, guys, so you can use 64 bit processor and 64 bit OS, guys. We can use this depend on. So you have to make sure your processor is what 32 bit or 64 bit but tell me compared to 32 bit 64 bit which processor is a faster one 32 bit or 64 bit guys yes it's correct See, that is 64 bit because 64 bit means it's taking 64 bit input is giving 64 bit output to you 64 bit is a faster one so that's why nowadays guys all the manufacturers are designing this software on 64 bit right? mostly all the manufacturers are designing their software on 64 bit if you try to install 64 bit software or 64 bit os on 32 bit processor guys is suitable it will allow to you like example windows 10 especially and our operating system 2012 2016 server with guys is designed only on 64 bit if i try to install on 32 bit processor so my operating system my software will install guys no you'll get the error it's not suitable and make the okay but nowadays guys we have one more processor it's called hybrid processor if you go to the hybrid processors in the market 
is hybrid processors are having both feature size 32 bit and 64 bit chip. So it means you can run 32 bit processor also, a 32 bit software and OS, and 64 bit software and OS guys. That is called hybrid. It's expensive, guys. These processors are expensive, but it's very reliable also in the real time for business purpose here. Okay, this is a processor. So, guys, this is called width here technology. Now, come to the FSB front side first speed. Now, what is this fun, fun side plus speed? We'll check, guys. But before that, how is working here? Uh, previously, guys, this speed is calculating FSB speed is calculating in megahertz, but nowadays we are calculating in megahertz, guys. Like example, uh, we have 300 megahertz, 400 megahertz, 9 megahertz, 900 megahertz. Now, what's this speed, guys? Here, what is the use of this FSB speed? Try to understand by the help of this tracker. Now, guys, I'm a user. This is my computer. I have a motherboard. I'm using keyboard mouse. I'm giving some instruction. So when I give the instruction, the first request will not go to processor, guys. The first request will go to my RAM. Then RAM to RAM will store my data. It's called memory. RAM will send the request to processor. Processor will do the process. Then processor will give back to RAM. RAM will store the data. Then I will get what output. So guys, you can see something between processor and RAM. Your data is transferring right data so this processor and ram and these other components are connected to each other by using some tracks by using some tracks so if you turn your motherboard guys if you see your back set of your motherboard uh, you can find some black color or golden color lines black color gold color lines here you can see guys here on the screen you can observe here this is my motherboard are you finding some gold color lines here some green color blue colors color searching but this is called tracks here actually yeah. so by the help of these tracks the components are connected to each other guys our motherboard these components are connected to each other by using these tracks here like processor is connected this io input are connected to each other guys here. can you make it you can show once uh, i'm a please Okay. tracks i want to see the tracks actually see this is a track here one i'm dragging here this is one oh, it's right, okay. connected are you getting here and here you can see there are very thin lines are there guys you can see here are you observing yeah, these yeah, tracks yeah. here so this basically these are getting connected to each other right? each other each other components they are connected like processor yeah, to uh, ram ram to processor keyboard yeah. mouse they are connected guys here these tracks you can see here okay so by the help of these tracks, they are connected to each other. So I'm not talking about all that tracks, guys. I'm talking about this processor to RAM, RAM to processor. So this tracks basically is called bus. It's called what here? Bus. Okay. And this, especially this track, from which track? The data is transferring from RAM to processor and processor to RAM. This track especially is called FSB track, guys. It's called what here? FSB. Front side, bus, you can say. Okay. So we are talking about this track and this track speed is what uh 300 megahertz maybe 900 megahertz guys or 1333 megahertz or 1600 megahertz or 2600 megahertz like the speeds are there guys okay now come to here by the help of this tracks the data will flow from ram to process process ram maybe i'm taking try to understand this guys maybe i'm taking 1 gb ram Nowadays, we are using 1 GB, 2 GB RAM, maybe 4 GB RAM, maybe 8 GB RAM or 16 GB RAM, whatever the size you are using, guys. 1 GB, 2 GB, 4 GB, 8 GB, guys. For example, I'm using 4 GB RAM. And my RAM FSB speed, try to understand, RAM also is having FSB speed. My RAM FSB speed is this much, guys. Right? How much? 900. I'm using 4 GB RAM, but FSB speed is 900. But my processor is supporting to this much, guys. Right? up to how much 2600 but my ram fsb speed is what 900 so it means between the ram and processor processor to ram the data will flow between this ram to processor by using 900 fsb right? okay 900 megahertz fsb speed here is using here but guys example i'm purchasing one more ram here and this ram is supporting to 600 megahertz okay 
RAM may be 4 GB, 8 GB, but 600 megahertz. So between the RAM and processor, data will flow by using 600 megahertz. Okay, this is what. So this track is called FSB track, and the speed of this track is measuring in megahertz time. Frame. Okay, that you have to check. Next, what, guys? Next is what we have to check cache memory. Now, what is cache memory? Try to understand this one. But this cache memory is calculating kilobytes and megabytes. Uh, nowadays, we are calculating megabytes like uh, guys like this uh, 4 megabytes, 8 megabytes, or maybe 12 megabytes. Yeah. Nowadays, we are using 12 megabytes. So, try to understand actually what is this cache uh, by using this diagram. Please try to understand this is what is cache actually. Yeah. So this is my diagram guys i say that i'm a user i'm giving 1 gb data guys how much gb data 1 gb data to my processor to the processor so first 1 gb data will go to memory memory will store the data memory will forward the request to my processor processor means central processing unit okay the processor will take my data but remember here guys at a time the processor will not do the process of 1 gb Okay, what the processor will do, it will take my 1 GB data, it will make in the pieces, small piece. And these small pieces are called chunks. Chunk means one piece, okay. And chunk size is called cache memory. This chunk size is called cache memory. And the cache memory chunk size is what? 12 megabytes. How much 12 megabytes? So it means each piece is 12 megabytes, 12 megabytes, 12 megabytes, 12 megabytes, right? Is a 1 GB data. Now processor will send the request to my ALU. ALU will do the process. Request will get back to my processor. And processor will arrange all these chunks in big packet, means one big 1 GB packet. It will send back to the memory and memory will send to my output. I will get the output. So it means when the request is going to processor to the process, the processor is not doing the process of 1 GB data. The processor will make the pieces of this data and this pieces of data is called a uh, chunk and this chunk size is called cache memory here and the cache memory is what's your 12 megabytes here. okay guys this is how the processor is doing the process so we have to check the cache memory uh, of the processor right so that's what <laughs> I'm not sorry to interrupt. Can you just show us uh, where is the FSB speed? How we can check it? In the system. FSB? Practically, in, you want to see? System. Yeah, in the system, can we check it? Like, how to check the FSB speed of my processor? Yes, RAM. yes. You want to see that? Just wait for five minutes. I will show you. Practically, I will show you all these things, okay? okay. How to check the speed, width, how to check FSB, how to check the cache memory, okay? I will show you all. Okay? Just first, I will complete this one. Now, guys, okay. uh, Apart from these four things, we have to check very, very important. That is what here. Nowadays, that is very, very important. If you want to become IT administrator or cloud administrator, compulsory you have to check your processor is supporting to this feature or not. If your processor is not supporting this feature, please don't purchase this one. I will say, be frank. So that's called virtualization. Nowadays, previously guys, the processor are coming without virtualization. But nowadays, all the processor are virtualized. So you have to check your processor is virtualized or not because a good feature what you will get guys if your processor is virtualized try to understand this one this is my machine right my machine is having processor i'm using os here so if your processor is virtualized processor guys if your processor is virtualization processor so inside this os i can install virtualization software like microsoft hyper v i will show you what is it right by V4 virtualization, guys, by using virtualization inside this machine, I can create number of virtual machines. So, guys, actually, you can see here, I have one physical machine, one physical hardware machine. But in this hardware machine, again, I am creating new machines, and these machines are called virtual machines. And, guys, at a time, I can run all this machine. You can see here, one is my host PC. This is called my host computer. Okay, physical machine. One, two, three is my three virtual machines. So at a time, I can run this three machine in single machine. And this is done by the help of this processor, virtualization. Your processor is, should be virtualized, guys. Okay, so how to check? I will show you this virtualized processor. Next is what when you're purchasing the processor, guys, we have to check core technology. Previously, guys, 
all the processors are single processor single processor right but then next dual core processor is came in the market but now it is we have core processor what is the meaning of core processor guys try to understand so example i have one processor a single processor right I mean, this is one processor but what i am saying try to understand i am saying my processor is two core how many cores guys two core so it means i have one processor one chip one processor one chip i have but in this one processor actual two processors are there guys one and two so it means i no need to purchase two processors for doing multitasking we require one processor with two core like this guys in the market we have four process four core processor means I have one processor in this we have four processors we can do multitasking here like this we have six core eight core 10 core 12 core 14 16 guys nowadays now in the technology we have 32 core processor also is available recently uh intel company amd company has launched 32 34 cores processor guys. okay so it means we don't need to purchase number of physical processor if you purchase one processor with 32 cores so it means in my machine i have 32 processors we can do multitasking your machine will not hang your machine will do the multitasking for big areas big servers we can but our laptop desktop does. our laptop desktop will support maximum four core or six core processor but servers are designed on eight cores 10 12 20 34 cores also is supported okay so we have to check processor okay but remember here if you want to do this mc uh 2012 operating system at least your processor should be two core right how many cores here two core. if your processor is not two core you cannot install this server 2012 and 16 also right? so we have core technology we have to check how many cores processor you need right? two core four core eight core ten core but remember here when you are increasing the cores your performance of the machine will increase right? and your processor will become expensive also okay guys this is one thing you have to remember now guys next thing this is my chip you can see this is my processor chip here in this chip is written this processor is intel processor the speed of the speed of this processor is 3.16 gigahertz guys 12 megabyte is what my cache memory guys and 1333 is my fsb okay. guys in the market there are so many companies out there who is selling this processor like toshiba samsung uh sony there are so many out there in this race but intel and amd these are the two companies who is making the best processors for our desktops means client side pcs guys and for our servers these companies are making the best processor in the market so that's why around the world our users end users companies are using only intel or amd processor guys okay so you can see here these companies are making two processors this is called my client processor desktop processor, right? i3 i5 i7 these are the desktop processors okay this processor i can use for in my laptops on my client side because my laptop desktops client machines are running only for eight hours nine hours not more than that so this is suitable right but if you want processor for server guys so this is processor for your server guys like amd is selling the processor by the name of Optron. What is the processor name? Optron. And in that, guys, we have a speed. So uh, two giga speed, three giga, four giga, two core, eight core, four core, right? Uh, ten cores, thirty-four cores are available. And Intel company is selling the processor by the name of Xeon, guys. By the name of Xeon here. In that also we have a technology speed are there, guys. Four core, eight core, ten cores are there. This we are going to use here. Okay. Okay, these are the speeds we have guys. So please note down this one. Remember this one by heart this name guys here. Because when you go to the interview, right? It will ask this question. Or when you're creating the service, it will ask, sir, what type of processors we need. Right? When you're making the servers, guys. When you're making the servers, what is the process? What technology process we have to use? So you have to say we have to go for AMD Optron or Intel Xeon, right? Okay. In that we have different different speeds different different ports are available okay this is a major now what is the next requirement guys here the next requirement is what here after processes guys the next requirement is what very important primary storage 
primary storage means what guys when you send some data to your computer try to understand when you send some data to computer by using keyboard mouse the first data will not go to processor guys first data will go to what here ram or rom guys ram when you power on the machine the request will go to ram when you send the data the request will go to ram so there are two primary storage we have guys one is called ram random access memory random access memory rom stands read only memory guys okay ram stands random access memory rom stands read only memory guys here so rom also is called bios is also is called bios basic input output system guys uh so many times i think you have used this bios guys how when you're starting a machine when you're starting a machine guys you're using bios right you're going first boot device cdd uh, till now example i have a new machine but i want to know in my new machine uh till now i have not installed os but i want to know how much ram we have i want to set the date and time i want to run i want to know the hard disk space i want to know the uh processor speed ram speed so you can go to bios you can check like when you start the machine is asking press this key maybe f2 tell or f12 go to bios and check the uh uh, information guys here okay that is called bios but when you're sending the data to your machine your data temporary will store in the ram guys and data will go to processor processor to ram ram will give the output to you but this ram not contain permanent data guys ram is called temporary memory and the ram we have two types static and dynamic guys static very old rams guys is outdated now it is nowadays we are using dynamic ram like uh ddr one ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 nowadays we are using guys here ddr4 we are using ddr ddr1 ddr2 is outdated guys ddr3 and ddr4 rams we are using here now guys here uh the ram what it will do it will send the data to processor now rams are dynamic rams are called primary storage because the first data will go to ram the ram will store the data the rams are called volatile memory guys require power to store the data if the ram is having data if your power supply is gone your data is lost by okay so when you start the machine you cannot find the data here so ram is storing the data but temporary guys not permanent now these are the rams are available guys you can see we have ddr2 ram this is ddr3 ram this is my ddr4 how to understand this rams by using this notch if this notch is matching on our motherboard fix it otherwise replace this one this notch we have to check guys if this notch is matching when you're fixing the ram properly this notch should be matched then you can say yes ram is good my ram is matching here so you can see this is my ddr4 ram guys and this is my laptop ram very small size compact size guys if you open your laptop you can find this ram you can see the speed of this ram is 2g and ddr2 technology and fsb speed is this much guys how much 667 megahertz fsb speed we are using guys okay so i will show you practically how to check all this information guys if you want to check all this information guys please do one thing right click on your process oh, sorry pc on your desktop right click on pc go to processor properties guys right click on your pc go to properties or right click on computer go to properties you can see you can see this information my processor is amd guys 2 gigahertz my ram is what 16 gb guys in my machine i'm using 16 gb ram my processor is what 64 bit my operating system also is what here 64 bit both are 64 bit guys okay or you can check like this also guys uh, right click on your desktop you can see in the bottom you have a desktop taskbar right click on your taskbar and go to the task manager guys go to task manager one new window will open guys in this window you can see we have performance go to this performance in performance guys you can go to cpu you can see here my processor is what here AMD this technology and my process 2 gigahertz socket is one only one socket but in that we have four cores means one chip one processor but with four cores means i have four logical processes right and you can see virtualization feature is there yes and enable also but by default this feature is disabled guys you have to go to bios you have to enable it. okay you can go to the memory guys ram if you go to this memory you can see total my ram is what 
16 GB DDR3 RAM I'm using, right? And FSB speed is how much, guys? 667 megahertz. Two sockets I'm using. Two socket means 8 GB plus 8 GB. Two RAMs I'm using here. If you look at 16, guys. Okay. This is you have to check. Or you can check like this also, guys. Go to the command prompt and write down the small command. What is the command? Uh, system info. What is the command, guys? System info. Right? If you write system info, hit enter, guys. You will get your info. It will take one minute time, guys. Just please wait here. I will show you the information. So you can see it's collected the information and information is available in front of you. So what is the command you have to use? System info. You can see this is my desktop. This is my registry operating system, right? Uh, when I started this machine, showing here my laptop, my 64 bit processor, showing my processor information. And guys, this is my total memory that is showing here. Okay. So you can see virtualization feature also is there. I can use this virtualization. So you can see virtualization feature is available here. Okay, so this is you have to check. Okay, guys, this much. But apart from this, guys, what we need here? Uh, we need secondary storage. This is called primary storage. Not only primary means temporary storage. Not only in this storage. Can you store your data permanently, guys? Can you access data for a long time? Can you access this data next day? No way. So we require what here? Secondary storage. What is secondary storage, guys? Here we require secondary storage. In secondary storage, we can store the data permanently, guys. So like in secondary storage, we have this many storage, guys. Like we have magnetic disk, we have hard disk, we have tape drive, tape drive for backup, guys. If you want to store the data, you can store in the CDs, DVDs, Blu-ray. You can store the data nowadays in pen drive also, guys. Memory card also, SSD, removal hard disk we have, guys. But tell me, guys, these many storages are available. For temporary data purpose, you can use moving data from one PC to other PC. Pen drive, memory cards, SSD, CDs, DVDs are best. But to run the machine, guys, what we need? We require what here? Hard disk. When I'm coming to this thread, we have hard disk. And in the market, guys, we have some types of hard disk. Types of hard disk. Are. What hard disk we have, guys? ID hard disk. Is there. SATA hard disk. Is there. Uh, SSD. Before SSD, guys, one more hard disk is there. Uh, that is called SCSI hard disk. Okay, then we have SSD hard disk. This many hard disks we have in the market. But regarding the storage class, we, uh, we have a class for storage guys, separate to our classes that on the day. In depth, I will teach you what is the difference between ID, SATA, SCSI, and SSD. And by the help of this hard disk, we can run. For example, when I'm making a machine, so we require compulsory one hard disk. Take any type of hard disk, guys. Take any type of hard disk, maybe uh, ID, SATA, SCSI, SSD, M2 hard disk, flash hard disk, NV, N2 hard disk, any hard disk take. And run this machine so when installing os guys so your os will install here so when you power on this machine your machine will boot with you okay so without hard disk we cannot boot we cannot run the machine guys okay so any doubt any question here guys so you can see here uh when you're building your network we require hardware component in hardware component guys you require motherboard you require processor and uh, we require uh, primary storage ram rom we require secondary storage we require smts also guys. that is very important so it's more power supply we require here then we require input devices keyboard mouse we require output devices also we require guys to run our machines here okay guys this many components we have but we are the administrator we are using these components to build our network so in our network guys what we have we have a service we have a clients, we have servers, we have clients, so we have to know this hardware problem. Okay. Now, apart from this, guys, here uh, in our MCSC course, here, uh, what are the topics we are going to cover? 
in this course i will show you guys here what are the topics are they we are going to cover here okay then i will show you what are the requirements to do the labs also i will show you again so these are the features guys so guys in 2012 In our operating system 2012 and 2016, guys, our operating system purely is designed on 64 bit, guys. This operating system is not available on 32 bit. Remember here, it's available on 64 bit. So, before installing operating system, you have to check your processor is 64 bit or not. So, put it to 64 bit or not. Okay. Then, installation is very easy, guys. Within 25 minutes, less than 25 minutes, I can complete the installation. Is my voice is clear to everyone? Can you confirm in the chat box? Okay, thank you. So installation is very easy, guys. Within 25 minutes, we can complete the installation. Less than 25 minutes. But previous operating system, when you're trying to install, it is taking 45 minutes to complete the installation, guys. Now next is what here? This operating system also is supported to the clouds. In future, guys, you want to migrate your servers your storage servers your web servers to the cloud you're saying we don't want these servers in on premises but on in cloud i don't want to create new servers i want this existing server should be in the cloud so you can migrate these servers by using this operating system to the cloud you can do migration also and guys we have a new feature that is called server manager server manager actually is a window in this window we have a dashboard area Actually, by the help of server manager window, what we can do, guys, we can add the services. Whenever I say add the web service, add the FTP service, storage service, DNS service, DHCP service, Active Directory service. So we can add by the help of the server manager. And in server manager, we have dashboard area. In dashboard area, I can check whether the service is added or not. If it added, it will show you the name. If it is not added, it will not show you the name there. Okay. And we can do remote management also, guys. Remote management is what? Example, my server is in ground floor. Now, as administrator, I'm sitting in fifth floor. I'm doing some work there. But suddenly, one user is calling. is saying, uh, admin, I forget my password. Please reset my password. So what I have to do, guys? I have to leave the fifth floor. I have to come to ground floor server to change the password. If I do like this, yes, you can do it. But we are wasting the time. So I can do one thing. Sit on fifth floor, right? Take the machine. Take the help of server manager. And from that machine, remotely, you can connect to your ground floor server, server manager. You can add the sub users. I can add the services we can manage. Okay, the remote manager, we can, we can change the password also. And guys, like this, the Microsoft, whenever the word is coming, Microsoft. So what you will say, guys, Microsoft is dealing the OS. And all Microsoft OS are graphical, GUI. But try to understand. In 2012, and in 2016, in 2012 and 2016, the Microsoft is saying our OS are available in two options, guys. One is GUI, that is called graphical user interface, that is called full installation also, guys. It's called what here? Full installation. And one is called server core. Server core, guys. Okay. Server core means command based, CMD. So it means if anyone is saying, sir, I love to work on commands. If anyone is saying, sir, I want to work with commands. The Microsoft is saying, yes, no need to go to Linux operating system. Use our operating system. And installation time, when installing OS, you have to select what option? Server core. If you select server core, when you start the machine, after installation is done, when you start the machine, you will get like this, guys. Like black screen. If you minimize the screen, you will not get any desktop. You cannot change wallpaper. You cannot get start button only black screen if you want to do anything use the commands by using commands manage this machine that is called what server code but if you use gui guys you will get like this graphical you can use keyboard mouse you can put the start button you can access all these things and you can work on command also guys both options are available okay so if anyone is want to work only command you have to go to server code if you want to work with command and graphical you have to use gui okay this option is available guys so be careful when installing OS, right? Most of the time I found students are selecting this option, which option? Server core. And after completing OS is, uh, is complaining, 
said we are unable to get desktop. We are unable to see the desktop wallpaper. We cannot change because you're using what server core. Now, guys, Microsoft is very famous. You know why Microsoft in the market is very famous. Ninety, if I'm not wrong, ninety-five percent of the world users companies are using Microsoft operating system. Why the reason is what Microsoft Active Directory. Microsoft Active Directory. Active Directory is a Microsoft service, guys. Active Directory is Microsoft. By using this Active Directory service, guys, we can design our servers. That is called our domain network, which I'm going to show you in our classes. How to create your domain network, guys. If you want to create your domain network, and really, guys, if you use domain network, you can feel very comfortable when you're designing a small, medium, large network to easy management. Save your time. Do the easy administration by using domain. So Active Directory is a Microsoft brand service. By the help of this Active Directory service, I can make servers, I can make different different types of servers, domain controls, clients, easy management we can do, okay? In that, there are so many features out there, guys, like administrative center, recycle bin, domain service, federation service, lightweight directory service, certificate service, right management service, all these topics, I'm going to teach you this one, okay? Many more are there. We are going to see this one here, okay? This is what. Now, next is what here? GPMC. Just today, in short, I'm explaining, but when I'm coming to the classes from tomorrow onwards, we'll take one more topic in depth. We are going to discuss all these topics, guys. So GPMC, Group Policy Management Culture. By the help of that, every organization administrator, guys, I'm not saying one or two, every organization administrator is using Group Policy to manage. Example, I don't want to allow the user to change the wallpaper. I don't want a uh, user should access Notepad application. I don't want my user should use browser like Google Chrome browser. User has to use only Internet Explorer browser. This is called conditions. I want my user should log in, but user should not use USBs, right? User use should not use USBs. That restriction I want. So like this, many more restrictions we can apply by using group policy, guys. Okay. And here, application deployment, guys. Centralized deployment of application means what? Example, in my network, I have nearly 200 machines, guys. How many machines? 200. One day my boss is coming is saying for a new project we require Adobe Reader. I think everyone is using Adobe Reader PDF application. Adobe Reader application. We want Adobe Reader application. Guys, really, if you know installation of Adobe Reader, how much time it will take to install Adobe Reader? Uh, less than five minutes, guys. Less than five minutes in one machine. But guys, in front of me, I have 100 machine example. My boss is saying in all 100 machine, I want Adobe Reader. So if I go one by one, one by one, one by one to install this Adobe Reader application in all 100 machine, one machine is taking five minutes time, guys. So 100 machine will take how much time? Please tell me in the chat box. One machine is taking five minutes. So 100 machine will take how much time, guys? Five minutes? Yes, very good. 500 minutes is taking, guys. But now tell me, if you're giving 500 minutes only for installation of one application, so are you saving your time or wasting your time, guys? You're wasting your time. But I can do centralized management by using this application deployment. How? By sitting on server, I can deploy this application to all 100 machines. All 100 machines. So whenever these users ask to the users, log into any machine and access your application. So whenever the user log into any machine, automatically application will deploy from server to client and application also will install from server to client, guys. Application will install from server to client. So that's for centralized management on applications, guys. Uh, um, I have one question here. For example, let us think there are 100 employees working in a company. Okay. And uh, out of which we need to install Adobe Reader for 80, 80 users, let us think, for example. Okay. And Fine. 20 users we don't need to uh, install. So, yes, how sir. do we figure it out? Yes, sir. We have that option also. You have two options. You can deploy to all, you can deploy to selected users. If I deploy to selected users, whenever these users are logging to any machine, you will get your application. But the same computer after five minutes, if I'm logging as other department user, that user will can't see this application. Okay, this feature also is available. When I'm coming to the practical, I will show you this one also. Practically, I will show you how to deploy the application to all and how to deploy to specific user. Only this user should get this application. Next user should not get, like that also. Disk quota, guys. Quota means limit. Disk means storage. On storage, I want this For example, uh, users are getting 100 GB drive. But my boss is saying, don't give the 100 GB drive to all users. I want user one should get one GB, user two should get two GB, user three should get three GB storage. 
not more than that that restriction we can apply by using this this quota and here one topic is there guys that is very very important which is added in 2012 and 16 that is called fs rm service file server resource management i will teach you by using this service guys not only storage we can restrict the application files also guys example uh, i want my user should use this drive but user should not store movie files user should not store video files user should not use store image files i want this restriction so we can apply this restriction and after applying restriction i can do monitoring also right i have updated to my user don't try to store this movie and image files because this is a company drive you only store company data but still user is storing the movie files but user can't because i restrict it but i want to know in future whether the user has tried or not if it is tried how many time is tried which video file which image file user has tried that monitoring we can do guys i will show you practically here by using fsrm service now guys we have distributed file system service by the help of this service we can manage share folders if you have large number of share folders in your organization the centralized management you want to do by the help of dfs and we have guys windows server backup by the help of that we can take the data backup drive backup complete hard disk backup and whenever the our data lost we can restore back 100 percent same data you report and dns domain naming system guys this is very very important service everyone has to know this one if you know this service you can say you are the administrator otherwise i will say according to my experience if anyone doesn't know this service so you cannot say you are the perfect administrator okay so dns is used for assigning the names now guys, tell me guys when you're accessing the servers over the internet like microsoft gmail facebook or you're accessing bank servers how you're accessing guys by using ip address or by using system name or by using your domain name like yahoo.com zoom.com gmail.com microsoft.com how you're accessing over the internet guys over the internet we are accessing all the servers by name like microsoft.com gmail.com how we are giving these names we are assigning these names by the help of this service right? that is called dns without this service over the internet we cannot share the data now guys internet information service is used for to make the web servers why we require web servers to host the websites like what type of site http https that i will show you practically and ftp also that's we can come here and you can see virtualization uh, i have explained that virtualization used for what to virtualize your network example i want to reduce the hardware in one machine in one physical server guys in one physical server i want to create many machines so i'm using 2.12 over here okay i'm using 2.12 uh, but guys i want to do i want to configure number of machines inside this physical machine guys so example i'm using 2.12 here right i'm installing virtualization application that is called microsoft hyper v guys right here so by using this inside this machine i can create multiple machines so you can see here i have only one machine but i'm running two three machines here this is called virtualization but practically we have a class for this i will teach you in that what is light migration what is virtual machines what is the storage what is the replica what is dynamic memory i will show you apart from that guys we have windows deployment service windows deployment service is used for os guys just now we're taking the example of application now we are taking the example of OS. Example, guys, I have 100 machines, new 100 machines. Without OS, can you run this machine? Without operating system, can you run any machine, guys? No, it's not possible. We require OS. And who's going to install this OS? Users, your staff, or administrator? Who is responsible person here? You are the administrator, you are the responsible person, guys. Our employees will not install, administrator. In how many machines you have to install? 100 machines. Assume it, one machine is taking one hour time. One machine is taking one hour time to complete installation. So 100 machines will take how much time, guys? 100 hours. Now you're giving 100 hours only for installation. So it means you're wasting your time here, actually, here, not saving your time. But you can do easy and simple management. How? By sitting on server, guys, I can install the operating system in all 100 machines at a time. It means one machine is taking one, one hour. Remotely, I'm installing operating system in all 100 machines by sitting on server, by using WDS server. Windows deployment server. I'm using. I'm installing the operating system all hundred in all hundred machines. So one machine is taking one hour time, guys. Hundred machine will take one hour only. Previously, hundred machines taking hundred hours, but now through WDS service, if I deploy the OS, so one machine will take one hour. Hundred machine will take how many hours? One hour only, guys. 
So within one hour, I can complete my installation by using this Windows Deployment Service OS installation. Okay. Now, guys, we have Windows Server Core. Just now, I see that Server Core is a command base. So, example, assume it. One person is working on GUI, means graphical, full installation. Graphical means full installation. But after some time, you are saying, sir, I want to work on Server Core. So yes, guys, you can convert from graphical to Server Core anytime by using one command. Tomorrow, I will show you what is this command. And after some time you're working on server core, you're saying, I want to come back to graphical. Yes, you can convert. So when you're converting, actually, you're not formatting your machine. You're not deleting your data, your data, your drive, your services will be seen. Just only interface you're changing. Graphical to core, core to graphical, guys. Okay, this feature is available. Anytime you can convert server core to full installation and full installation to server core. Guys, Network access protection service is used for to check your health of the PC. All the antiviruses updates are done or not. We have DSCP. DSCP is especially used for IP address management, guys. If you want to do centralized management in large area of the machines, maybe you have small, medium, large, you can use DSCP server. And nowadays, guys, you're using internet. I'm also using internet. The ISP is giving cable. We connected the internet cable to laptop, but our laptop or desktop require IP address or not. But ISP is not coming to my PC or your PC to give the IP. But how we are getting our PCs are getting IP. How guys? By using DHCP. So ISPs are using over the internet DHCP server to assign the IP to machine. So how to do this management? Also, I will show you over the internet within the LAN. Now, guys, security is very, very important because if any user is logging to my machines, we require security protocols here. So within the LAN, guys, when the user accessing the servers, accessing the machines, the Kerberos protocol is working. Remember here, Kerberos version 5, Kerberos protocol is a protocol to get the authentication to confirm your username and password. And over the internet, guys, when the user accessing your services, data, FTP, uh, HTTPS, or VPNs, the users are using what here? Internet security protocols, guys. Okay, so these are the protocols we have. But apart from that, guys, we have so many other topics. I will show you what is clients, what is member server, what is the difference between types of users user accounts i will show you uh, what is permissions i will show you there are so many topics other topics are there i will show you profiles also i will show you home folder also guys how to manage the home folders and i will show you uh, ous how to manage the ous and i will show you how to assign a uh, delegation control right to the users example you have junior admin example i joined to your company as a junior admin you will give full access to me guys or you will give partial access if you give full access i can do anything i can delete create the servers you will be partial how to give delegation control how to apply delegation controls i will show you then i will show you uh, guys here how to make the trust between two different companies like hdfc bank is there icc is there I want to allow HDFC user should use ICAC AT machine. I want ICAC user should use HDFC. Nowadays, we are using guys here. If you belong to any bank, ATM, are you going to other ATM banks? <clears throat> are you using drawing the money or not? How is possible? Like telephones are there. Are you using BSNL or Reliance? You're making the call to BSNL. BSNL making that call to Reliance. How? By using this trust. How to create that trust between the servers? I will show you. Then, guys, we have a concept here that is called tree. We have a concept that is called forest. We have a concept that is called sites. I will show you and how to do the troubleshooting between the roles. Transfer of roles are there, guys. Between the servers, I will show you how to do the role, how to use the roles to tra transfer. And apart from that, guys, there are so many topics are there: DNS, DHCP, web server, storage, VPN also is there, guys. Here, rate configuration also is there, guys. How to configure the rates. Right, read zero, read one, read five. I will teach you guys here. Okay, there are so many out there. But in a two-hour class, we can I cannot go all this topic, guys. This is a brief explanation for you. But when I'm coming to the topics here, guys, so in depth from tomorrow onward, we'll take one more topic. <coughs> in depth, <coughs> sorry, in depth we are going to discuss all these topics, guys. Here, okay. So any doubt, any question here? So this is our today introduction class, guys. Only theory class I have explained here. But today you have to do one thing, guys. If you want to do all the labs, try to understand this one. If you want to do all the labs, MCSE labs, 
right so everyone is having laptop guys with 4 gb ram or more than 4 gb ram yeah everyone yeah. yes or no everyone is having yes good okay at least 4 gb or more than 4 gb with Wi-Fi. okay <coughs> so please do one thing guys for today practical do one thing you have to do some downloads for today labs so guys do two things first download one software and i will you i will show you right how to use this that is called vmware software vmware workstation is a free guys vmware workstation this is a software you have to download is a free of cost how to download i will show you this software you have to download Oh, just go to here guys and go to the google <coughs> so go to the google and type it here vmware workstation download guys what you have to write vmware workstation download and hit enter go to the official website guys don't go to here and then vmware.com Go to download VMware workstation here. Click here, and I'm sharing this link in the chat box also, guys. You can copy from there also. You just paste it in your browser and download, guys. So I'm sharing this link, this website link. You can check in the chat box, guys, and see. Save in your notepad and use this one, guys. Whenever you have a time today, download it. Okay. So you can see, guys, here you have option here that is called uh, workstation 15.5. Download. Don't download Linux. Download this one, guys. 15 point pro. This you have to download. Okay, one. And the last, guys. Next, you have to download before ending the class. You have to download 2012 uh, OS ISO 5. And same time, please download 2016 also, guys, because I will show you all these practicals on 12 and 16. These two you have to download. Okay, how to download? I'm saying download, don't install, guys. If you install this operating system in your laptop, really, your operating system, you're using operating Windows 10, you are going to lose that. Don't install, just download it. So just go there and type here download 2012 R2, guys. R2 means release two, guys, here. Right? So there are two operating systems are there 2012 and R2. R2 means release two, new version is given. So go to this Microsoft website, directly Microsoft, guys. But before going to this website, you have to do one thing, guys. You have to create one Outlook ID, guys. You know, Gmail ID, everyone, I think Gmail is there with you. But you have to create one Outlook email ID. Just go and type Outlook here, guys, and create one free ID. Is an email ID is very, very useful now, or maybe in the future, you're going to learn Azure. That time also is very, very helpful for you. We require this ID. So create one free account, guys. Outlook account. And come back just go to G, uh, google and type 2012 r2 download right click here guys and this operating system is available for 180 days guys how many days 180 days till 180 days you can use free of cost again format again reinstall it once again use for 180 days like this you can use for testing purpose you can see guys i'm in 2012 r2 180 days and what you have to download iso file don't go to other options guys select iso file and click on continue once you click continue it's asking your name is asking your last name company name if you're not working any company type my company name zoom technologies and size of the company five to nine users your title of the job in this company is what system admin slash architect okay then email address write your outlook email id guys like ahmed at the outlook.com then your phone number guys for otp right your country name your country is belongs to india guys so or your regional country select it and accept this continue okay once you continue guys i think you will get otp and through that you can download this so downloading will take at least uh, half an hour guys or if your internet is speed is good uh, is going to download very quick here so download this one and apart from that guys go to the top here you can see 2016 also is there so download 2016 in the same way guys download 2012 and 16 guys okay download 16 okay 
But if anyone is saying, sir, for client side, which operating system will use? On client side, guys, we'll use Windows 10. So if you're not having Windows 10, guys, operating system, so please do one thing, download Windows 10 also, freely. It's a free of cost. Just go to the Google and Windows 10 downloading is a little bit different, guys. When you're downloading Windows 10, guys, is a little bit different compared to the Proton 12. First, what we have to do, when you're downloading Proton Windows 10, guys, from Microsoft website, first we have to download one small tool that is called software. That software is called this one, guys. You have to download Windows 10. And once you click this, guys, here, one media software will download. Okay? Through this media software, that is called tool. And through this tool, you have to download the Windows 10, guys. So it means one software will download, and through this software, you have to install, guys. Okay, everyone? Okay, so what you have to do for today practical, you have to only downloads you have to do, guys. What you have to download and don't install anything, guys. Please don't install any operating system. If you install operating system, really I will say your operating system, what you're using now, your operating system, not only opening your data also will be lost, guys. So you have to download first VMware software, VMware workstation. If anyone already know that Oracle Virtual Box. You can use that also, no problem here, but I'm suggesting to use VMware Workstation. And download what, guys? Uh, 2012 OS and 2016 copy also and Windows 10. And it will take some time, guys. Uh, every operating system will take at least half an hour, half an hour to download, okay? If you don't know how to download Windows 10, just go to YouTube and check how to download Windows 10 operating system, okay? But 2012, 2016 just already have shown that, guys, is very easy. And really, you, your PC, your laptop require at least 4 GB RAM, guys, not 3 GB. If you have 3 GB, please increase your RAM because 3 GB nowadays no one is using. <laughs> okay, Pony, please increase your RAM because on 3 GB you can do labs, but you are going to feel very slow. You, you can feel you can feel your machine is going to really very slow okay? because these are server OS. So we require 4 to 8 GB RAM, guys. Okay, but tomorrow I will show you all these things here, how to use this installation also. Just today you download it guys okay so today we are ending our session here guys here uh, we have seen what is mcsc what are the types of jobs basic things we have discussed guys right and we have seen this is our schedule we have right we have seen all these things here okay oh uh, yes uh please after some time after uh like uh, uh one hour you can call me that i'm free you can if you have any questions you can whatsapp me also guys i have already shared my mobile number also whatsapp number you can WhatsApp. okay if you have any question any doubts you can post your questions and doubts on my whatsapp number i will give you the reply to you okay guys so thank you for today's session guys i am ending the session now today and tomorrow i will show you uh os versions what is network what is networking LAN types of LAN so, and tomorrow I will show you OS types of OS versions of OS and installation also I will show you tomorrow okay so thank you everyone bye see you tomorrow bye everyone bye. and if you have any questions you can ask me please if you have your own doubts questions I will have see your questions Okay, bye everyone.